what a lovely harbour Padstow has here. The subjects are endless. Uh, problem is, um, I don't know where to start. We're going to put some drawings down, definitely. Now that's the scene um, that I'm going to paint in watercolour. Used uh, my graphite pencils, and that's the um, pencil drawing that I've uh, made already for me as reference when I do a watercolour. Okay then. Well, let's get cracking. I've needed to come inside due to weather conditions. Um, but basically I've put the drawing down, going to use three brushes, that's the large mop, the medium and then of course the rigger. And of course my usual arrangement of um, burnt sienna, raw sienna, cadmium yellow, um, Prussian blue, cobalt blue, ultramarine blue, uh, that is cadmium red, that's cadmium lemon, light red, uh, burnt umber, Indian red, alizarin crimson, Payne's grey, and another lemon yellow. But obviously I won't be using all of those. Um, as always, um, you don't need them all. And the camera is uh, being knocked about. So there we go. Okay, well let's get started. First thing I'm going to do is to uh, damp certain parts of the paper. And those parts are the sky, well, the very little sky, but I'm still going to uh, damp uh, the sky, the paper in that area. And I just want to put some basic colour on this. It's really vital when you look at these subjects to put some basic colour on. Now, I'm putting raw sienna in uh, for no reason other than just to take off the white of the paper initially. Now, I'm having light coming from the left. So I'm going to have a stronger um, raw sienna that side. There you go. So that's that. Um, my buildings will need um, just a little bit of light to them. A little bit of sort of light just catching. That one's pink, so I'm leaving that. But just a little bit of light. In actual fact, why am I leaving that? Let's give that little bit of this lovely yellow color before we start there we go so immediately i've given light to the subject now i'm cleaning the brush and i'm going to use um, cobalt blue for the sky uh, it's only a weak blue most of it will be covered and that's going in there just where that line is there we go and as you can see the paper is lovely and damp, so it's running nice. Then to that cad, uh, cobalt, I'm adding a little raw sienna and a little cadmium lemon. Sorry, cadmium yellow. Cadmium lemon would be a little bit too strong. And this gives us that feeling of land there. There we go. Now, I'm not too concerned now if that dries, um, although let's just leave some little touches because the basis of this is the dark trees with the light buildings because those trees are quite high up and you'll see very, very little sky. So the first thing I've got to do is to use some dark colour. So I'm using the Prussian blue straight away with a little burnt umber or burnt sienna, either one of those would do, and a little cadmium yellow. So it's all those sort of rich colours, and I'm going to paint in the feeling of a tree. Now it's going to be similar in process to when I did my pencil sketch that um, is laying around somewhere. 
at this moment um, but either way and uh, I'm going to paint around the roof areas like that so we're going to have lights and darks lights and darks to give us a chance to see where these areas are right now we're going really dark now because this side had a darker tree just coming in on that right hand side and very dark in actual fact so to get that burnt sienna prussian blue this is why i use prussian blue because you can get some lovely dark shades which once you've got the dark shades in you can then see the light areas and i'm going to have a light tree there because there was a couple of light trees but also some dark trees as well so there we go and immediately we start to get that feeling of um, lights and dark lights against darks darks against lights using a brush that's very large now all of a sudden i'm going to spring back in with a rich green again just there and that i'm just lightening up with a richer lighter color and that is also going to spring out either side i want a little bit of light around the top um, like that picking around the chimneys i'm going to make too much of this there we go and uh, that's the beginning of these lovely trees plenty of burnt sienna in there because this time of year it's beginning to get a little bit on the sort of green brown side so and we can just i want it fairly soft you see um but also i want to indicate light coming from the left hand side so some of these will be dark some will be light there we go and immediately once you go dark so you've got a lovely light area there and the chimneys all of a sudden take up that light that light feel a bit more yellow now within that so i'm playing with the blues and the yellows and the browns to see if i can create um leaf shapes really or at least the feeling of trees in the background yeah i think that's sufficient good now i'm working my way along trying overall to be fairly light in that lower area fairly dark in that lower area in actual fact i'm going to go really dark here because i just fancy getting a dark tree there's lots of one or two fir trees standing up so um, I'm going to introduce a couple of those just in that area just for the hell of it there we go and because I painted down to the roof that won't actually go any further right a bit more brown there to denote some of these are very large trees but they've got a, a little bit of sort of openness to them as well it is like a wooded area really um, but of course if you get lights and darks um, I don't really want to go over this area much more I mean I may have to touch us here and there but overall um, I want to treat get this treated off in its own way there we go now got the lots of darks there now I'm going to clean the brush going to use a little bit of sort of raw sienna and and um, cadmium lemon cadmium yellow paper still damp just to get that feeling of a of a lighter tree and see how that's still damp I know it's not very warm but at least I've still got a damp area that will help when I come to put in the rest of the trees and that's why i always advocate using brushes that are large if you don't do that 
you're never quite going to get that particular feel. Good, so that's that. Now we're going in again with some very dark stuff. And this time, just to hold in that right hand side, I'm going in dark again. Because what I want is the overhang of those trees there. Just playing with the light. And all of a sudden, you can see the light areas of a tree standing behind. Got to be tree-like shapes. It doesn't mean to say they've got to be leaf areas. You know, just tree-like shapes. A bit darker there. There we go. So that's an impression. That's a blurred image of trees in the background. That's what I'm looking for. A bit more yellow now for this one. So that we're given that impression of that. Some of these are tall trees, some of them are smaller trees. Um, some stick out in front of others. Um, it really is a hodgepodge of trees in the background there. I just want to watch that that doesn't... When you're working with a large brush, you will notice that you get blobs of colour, so you've got to watch that. Like that, and just try and keep that off of the roof, that's okay. That's running down, I'm happy with that go that's good there we are take a bit off the brush and size across just so as you lift off and there's a tall chimney I want to try and keep that I don't want to paint over that if I can help it um, pad size are lovely never been before um, but um, really enjoyed my visit um, and I'm trying to capture that um, like that really a bit more brown now on the outer edges of that one just to give a tree like shape which is always um, a good thing to do can you see how we're beginning to shape up the, um, the buildings now and I'm just using that brush to lift off and just to tease across the line just a little bit around the bottom edge there don't want that to be I want that to be the darkest area although don't mind one or two lights you know you can have too many darks you know I do say about darks but you can have too many so let's not um, see the way I'm shaping the brush up into a chisel edge and then I can cut across and lift off colour as well as lay on. You're going to watch it doesn't look like as if you're lifted off. There we go. That's okay. Right, now we go into a raw sienna now. Um, just for... Just because it's there, if you get what I mean. And there is some openness to this. I'm picking up a little bit more detail on this one for no reason than to ring the changes because we did see some trunk work on some of these just going to pull that across as well just blend that right I picked up a bit of paint there so it should be a little darker there we go so you know you can always pick up a little bit of paint and because I damped the paper you'll notice that it stayed damp for a considerable amount of time um, that helps it's not always required but in this instance I thought yep to get that to work we do need and I'm just shaping those see the way I'm just looking back and just 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 before it dries just trying to shape the outer edges of those trees it should work okay it's um coming along quite nicely really now as I work my way across I'm going to be um, a little bit lighter and I'm going to try and pick up a different sort of strata of tree so I'm sort of using 
the back of the side of the brush and we're getting a dry a dark uh, sorry a dry edge now okay so that depicts that the next tree that will be lighter see the way I'm using a the point of the brush to try if I can to keep that chimney now we've got a lovely light tree there and what I'll do I'll elaborate on that because that could be that it stands like that and it doesn't look right at the moment but hopefully all being well it will do need to get the shape right but here we go that's the start of that rather unusual tree a bit more yellow now and using a semi-dry brush to create a bit more texture within these trees because some of these trees are a bit more open a bit more brown too i don't know why i've not used brown so much but because it is that sort of time of year really yeah yeah now just before it dries pick up some dark paint off the palette and just touch in this right hand side just to try and get feel of overhanging branches because not all trees well very few trees are perfectly shaped particularly in an area like this and uh, get that lovely feel of background right just before we go to picture I'm going to pick up some darker stuff again now because that will show up the light I'm just using the point is that shaped right it probably has actually just to give slightly different textured feel to that a bit open this tree a bit denser in the lower area so lots of trees are you know rare, varying shapes I'll get some branches within that that'll pick up nicely then as we head down more blue more brown a little bit of yellow just to sort of ring the changes a little and this is where we show a tree coming there that's the top of that try not to have too many bits and pieces in other words too many strata of trees are too much of a good thing I always say bit of an angle there and um, then we come down and this is where we get really dark again which um, is something that um, we need to do to create the fern of light there we are see where that sort of picked that up and that sort of picked that up against that light area see the way we're trying to get a sense of of openness to that tree just springing out at that side there there we go look at that and that's a dark tree there i think we can we can safely say we're nearly there just got to work my way down with some really dark stuff and all being well um, we're getting there for the start of this lovely little coastal subject padstow here in well i was going to say sunny not today it's a little bit on the inclement side but um that's the way i like to uh, i like the challenge of painting into with wind blowing or drawing anyway i really have had to move inside to get this um attended to uh, there's just a little bit of a cover there there's a little ice cream stall or whatever but other than that that oh shall we have a figure can we paint around and leave a figure can we get away with that 
Another little figure there, perhaps? Anyway, apart from that, we can put legs and everything on them, but that's the tops. And that, just see a little bit underneath there? Yep, there we go. And that's the end of the building. And that is all you need to do, I think, apart from just filling that in. And all I'm going to do for that is give that a nice, fresh, clean wash of colour. I hope to just get some, just lose, just lifting a bit of paint off of the brush and a little bit of water because I just want that to, to glow really in sunlight because it just rings the changes. It gives that little bit of sparkle to that area. And that is all I'm going to do. I'm going to let that completely dry and work on the buildings. Now I'm going to give these buildings a warm grey. Uh, cobalt blue, Indian red and raw sienna. There you go. Let's see how that works on this one. It's got to be a warm grey. Right, there you go. Now this is not the sunlit side, and I'm trying, if I can, to paint this very quickly, because I want to try and get a loose feel to this. I don't want to be too fussy around these. Um, so I'm depicting that lovely stone that you get down here in, um, in Cornwall. Lovely Cornish slate stone. So I think that, I don't know quite, oh, that's a little bin of something. Right, leave that figure there. There we go. And I'm going to ring the changes with the that building. It's similar stone, but I'm adding just a touch more red. Well, that's too much, but doesn't want to be very dark because we're looking really, there we go, just, just decided to ring the changes. What are they? Right, the windows are lighter, which um, I've got to try and, depict although a couple of them I've run over there but there you go I'm still running over them look at that there we go that's a bit better um, but either way provided we've got some light on them uh, never be too fussy you know if you over if you really overthink how far do we go down right so we've got a light area just above those there not really worried too much if I don't get precisely the right um, thing there and I've just noticed that I've run over onto something that isn't quite right so I'm lifting off that area there because this is lighter and it's sort of like a, a very light green well that's amazing I've got a little bit of very funny green on my palette. So let's just put that in. There we go. And then we've got surrounds that I'm going to put in on that. There we go. And that finishes too with a grey underneath, which I'll tend to later on. So that's that. And now we have a lovely pink building. But before we do that, I'm going to go back and paint another grey slate building is there no window there well could be but i'm just depicting this without one notice i'm only doing the frontage because the back of the buildings are the side of those buildings are in complete sunlight so i'm only doing the fronts which is semi shadow so those frontages will probably need to be left almost white paper, which I can tint later if I need to. And then I've got steps coming down there, steps coming down there. Whoops, just watch that, that's, that's light. And then we can see under there and down there. I think there's a window there or something going on, that's good. Figures, they'll all come in. Um, right, so that grey, and it's a bit more of a blue grey, I keep hitting that, but you'll have to bear with me because 
um, under these conditions it's not always an exact science right blue grey for this lower area anyone that's been to Pasto will probably um, know when I'm getting these colours right or wrong anyone that stayed there for any length of time but all I can say is that um, under the conditions and you've got to remember it's my impression of it did we get white at the bottom no that comes right down there and we do have a little bit of that grey which is interesting I'm trying to get a point now on the brush we are see the way I point to the brush because around these windows is a stone surround and that goes around all of the windows it's it's not uh, a uniform stone it's sort of like a jagged sort of stone but there we go that gives that impression that's all I'm worried about an impression that's all I, re I really want just an impression of it good now we'll do the pink one the pink one is purely Alizarin with plenty of water and can you see how that yellow is shining through see how that yellow you can still see a little bit of patch and that's give the whole picture that brilliance that I particularly like now we're going back in with this grey again I've got loads of it so let's use it I'm going to paint in trying to get in some varying tones um, right let's like that across the top that is very dark but I painted it in light to start um, yeah that'll be okay right I'm going to drop in a bit of Indian red into that like that uh, a little bit of raw sienna a bit more of that raw sienna actually because that's going to be in shadow so I'm not going to pick up perfect colours on that right now I'm going to back in with the grey and this is going to be more in sunlight so it's less dark but it needs to be darker than that definitely and I'm drawing across to start with just more or less damping the paper really uh, there's a boat there an old that's it that's it lovely lovely right raw sienna Indian red I'm going to remix cobalt blue which is actually a good thing to do because you get a change of colour which is always good I think and I'm trying now to run across with that, this as quickly as I can because I need a soft effect in a moment so this is the that's the post I'm, although it's black I'm leaving it light at the moment just to ring out hopefully when we do come and paint that in right pull that out like that now the reason I'm trying to be quick is because I'm adding more of the rural sienna more of the cobalt blue to give me a sort of like a aging effect that we've actually got in the lower part and it's so like blurred so I want to catch it while it's still damp because that gives it that age effect see that and that will make a big difference to the final sort of outcome there we are and some of these areas can just sneak up into that a little bit hard edged there we're not too worried about that there we are plenty down there and we'll allow that to dry I'm quite happy with the way this is coming along looking good now I'm going to put first washes on the water and I'll put that in while that is still damp and I'm using um, Prussian blue raw sienna and one or two other bits of color that I've got there I want that to be a soft edge so that looks a watery sort of I don't want too many gaps so it's got to be um, got to paint around the boats 
so I've got to really sort of hit that at just the right this is but far from the finished area note so I'm going back just in case it dries far from the finished um, color but it is there we go it is a color that relates to water which to me um, yeah that we've got water there we've got another cat another sort of porter portal there there we go and sweep that across and that's a portal we won't sweep that across we've not got any shadow in this yet it's purely a color that will give us try and take that away that will give us a feeling of water even the reflection will not be completely white that's why I'm going over even the reflections of the, these light boats and now I'm coming down I'm adding more blue a bit more raw sienna just to get a little bit darker because it's always nice to have some little dark touches within the foreground even initially there we go and that is the start of the water we'll allow that to dry now that's the scene um, that I'm going to paint in watercolour right now I'm going to paint the roof areas and we're looking for a grey slate not too dark let's just see how I am with this colour I'm mean, changed to the smaller mop by the way yeah it could be could be a bit lighter than that because I actually that's actually light so I just add more water it's actually a bit more blue yeah let's just get this more blue gray slate effect if I can very very weak color that's a bit strong and that comes down there like that I haven't done the line for that but it must do all things being equal and in actual fact quite often all things are not equal when you come to paint <laughs> that's better there you go that's what I'm looking for a bit of dry brush work as well just to give a sense a bit of shine to these tiles because they're in sunlight yeah they're all the same we may as well paint them all the same could change colors but at this stage right, let's just add a bit more of another color into this one there we go just been a little darker across the top but there the guns down there notice I'm leaving some edges tidy them up at a later date that's it um, don't really know where I am now all oh, right there you go all um, oh, right yes there's a gap there there's quite a gap there those two are close together that's it there you go I can see it now sunlit sides leave those and technically shouldn't be any overlapping because I think they go into the wall area that's all right actually they don't on my sketch so I'm going to bleed my sketch and I'm going to run right the way across them and that comes into there like that and then of course this is another one the window there a lovely sort of like grey slate sort of like light grey really I always love painting these lovely old buildings in these uh, coastal subjects we don't get them where I live well say so we don't we do but I don't visit the coast that often which I suppose I should do really because um, it's always a good thing to do learns you um, you've got buildings and boats I love boats 
no reason why we shouldn't paint boats as well as buildings there we go in actual fact that green comes down there but initially I'm going to paint that right the way across there we are not going to be concerned about that that's why oh this is this is sort of like a quite a grey slate um, got a little bit more brown in there so I add a bit of red to that that makes it more brown this is in shadow anyway actually no need to be too fussed with this because it's going to be shad shadowed um, we have a, win have a large window there I think so just trying to remember now as I'm not completely on site there we are it's coming along very very well now I'm using cobalt blue and Indian red for the dark color of this like a speedboat really that's moored there so that runs like that let's just add a bit more water to that when I add water I'll just pick up a bit of other color that I've got in my um, palette already I don't see any point of using any more water because otherwise it does overdo the feeling of what happens at the back how it goes at a slope like that okay um, now I don't feel any need to keep adding because if you clean the brush you lose that color that you've already mixed up so that's not really what we're looking for and funny enough it's got a covering here that has railings so if we can they're not windows it's railings and if we can does that go yeah that goes like that right if we can remain we can save that even if we overpaint in places it gives that railing effect without the need to paint it all in and that rail presumably comes down there hmm yeah that'll do yeah that'll do us and that covers the inside up to there there you are that's the start of that boat now while I have some light greys I'm going to pick a piece off my palette same as the tiles really to actually show this cover it's, it's a cover for the outboard and it's all laid up for the winter one would presume and it just flips over there like that so that's a cover for that doesn't look like a lot but it will it's on the outside so we're not really worried right we've got a lovely blue boat now so I'm just picking up a bit of cobalt and creating that lovely dark blue there not that dark but it's okay and of course that shows off the railings at the back of that boat so if we can pick around them like that that do we see any of the front of it hmm probably not so let's not get too worried about that that's okay now the windows again for the back boat cobalt blue Indian red a bit more blue this time because they're they're windows so we've got a window there the shape of these boats will gradually show when we come to put in shadow got a window at the front there like that and we finish there I think I'm right in doing that but anyway and is there another window there just a small one may very well be that looks good to me and then we've got some windows here I think that's a big one but I'm painting it in as a big window and that is a smaller side window once you get the windows in you're pretty much laughing really well, let's do the inside of that boat there 
because you can probably see just the inside of that as it starts to rise quite a quite a deep sort of curve to the front of that boat right, what we got here We've got no reds there good because we don't want to attract the eye to the foreground it's got to look over to the buildings in the background very very light um, light blue there for that uh, boat's covering then we have the dark blue again um, how can we darken that bit of Indian red yeah for the old lifeboat that I would presume is now used to take people out and how does that go then? All oh, right, okay. So we've got the keel of that, sorry, the stern of that, not keel, the stern, and that then swings around like that, and tucks back. That's that. And then we have, um, just to remove a little paint because that side of that is somewhat lighter because of the sunlight Ho hopefully I can pick that up there we go see that so that's a little bit lighter now I'm picking up burnt sienna right on the point of the brush because we can just about see the inside of that and it's brown and it's got quite a quite a tuck to it like that try and remain uh, get that edge right there we go then we clean the brush because we then come in to the very sweet burnt sienna which is the area there lovely burnt sienna and then once we put the bit of the dark cabin in away we go now just before i finish this just going back now to produce that sort of dull light tree that we can see here there we go and all that needs now is trunk work and we've got another little punch there a little bit of light against the darks good let's see how far we've got now cobalt blue again with light red is being used to create these dark posts that support the portal as it rises and falls all right so we're going to do the sunlit side first like that and just before it dries if we're lucky and not always we're lucky but if we are lucky we can do the back edge darker and that should give us a feeling that that's a rounded shape you can always make that darker later on but there you go so that's the top and that's the top there we are let's go a little darker with that more paint less water even a little bit of red it's always useful for these back edges there you go look at that see the way that don't touch the front if it's beginning to dry just leave it and that should give us the required turn that we need right windows that's what we want windows well there's not much more to do but as you can see from the finished painting there's some finishing touches to go in and uh, you know one or two um, obviously shadow work and you know there is a bit of work um, but uh, stay tuned and um, it won't be long before um, I can show you exactly how the complete painting was finished. Now most of these windows are very uh, have a light surround but 
they're not all that dark so that's the way I'm going to depict them if I can get the brush to point up correctly there we go and notice I'm just sweeping the brush in I'm not even painting around what we got here hmm, we'll do those in a moment that's a window like that that's a window got some figures there but we won't worry about those that's another window there another one there another one they don't look like windows do they not at the moment hopefully all being well they will do there we are look at that that looks windowish to me this one's a bit more solid something going on in these windows so that's what I'm going to do paint them a bit more solid just to don't want the windows too much the same do we and that's a door so we'll leave that for now and we've got a window there runs along the top runs along the top there and down that's an opening oh no is that an opening it is actually so what we've got we've got a, a dark area there but then a light area on there and this is a window okay so we'll put that in that's also a window one believes uh there is is there a window there well i'm putting one in just looks as if there should be don't right now we do windows there the way you know it, it really is one of the simplest things you could ever do when you paint windows perfect there's the windows in now the door openings I'm actually painting in them um, quite dark to the right hand side light coming from the left remember and that is also going to be a little darker there right and that's a door these doors are open so consequently um let's just make those two downstairs windows um consequently we can see light coming in because the sun's coming from the left we can see light on the right hand sides similar with this one that is more of an opening than a window funny enough that's a window so the difference between a door and a window there's no um, reflection in a door so you need to block it in with a window there quite likely is reflection because it's a glazed area and I'm painting around a figure there that will sit there quite nicely that's good cleaning the brush and just got to paint one particular area with a little bit of blue grey um, and that's that area across the base there it also had some colour like that here we are good what else have we got that's all white that's all white Poof, we're getting there now we're going to use light red just clean the brush because I want some nice light red now we need some reds on those buildings not a lot but we do need a little red on those buildings so I'm diving into the light red to try I don't want to be too brilliant with this red so the light red I feel is about right now we have chimneys that um, have light red there uh, light red there leaving the left hand side at this stage unpainted um, or we have a light red there another one there now a couple of these well actually all of them apart from that one have a ridge tile that's actually red so I'm suggesting that not painting it in it's just suggesting it we also have um, do we have any red down there yeah we do actually I've even, I haven't even painted that roof there look look at that 
so is that red cap along the top just trying to remember really anyway there is a, another chimney that runs down there like that now I'm putting in the pots um, but leaving light on the left hand side of these chimney pots go look at that perfect doesn't look much at the moment but it will do well hopefully all being well while I have some very light sort of grey I'm going to finish that roof off because that is not in direct sunlight there you go okay let's leave that it's one or two dark almost black areas for but I don't like the word the term black um, for that it's like a like a canopy really I suppose runs over the top there we do have um, yeah we do have a couple of boards we've got a board there like that another board there like that uh, there's a bit of a window there and a bit of a window there let's see any other boards that we can see mm, probably not really um, no couple of other little bits and pieces um, oh while we've got the chance we can put in the inside of the cabin that we can see there on the old lifeboat that's that's worth doing is there anything else before I start to look at well here we go steps very very suggestive there we go good enough <laughs> Right, another bit of grey I've missed. So easy to miss colours when you're painting. It's quite a complex um, painting, I know, but it's it's very enjoyable to learn to paint these sort of complex um, paintings. You do. It does have a real appeal, well, to me anyway. Actually, the hull of that is dark. Um, and that's just dark blue so cobalt again I do like a lot of blues here which to me is ideal if you're in the foreground it really does um, help not to have too many brilliant colors in the background area and then that's the stern there with the um oh while we have this color I'm gonna put that in there because that's a shadow that's it there we go we'll do shadows in a moment let's not get bogged down with shadows um what else we got there nothing much really um we've got a dark brown grey blue which seems a funny suggestion of 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 an outboard motor but that's what I'd call it there outboard there outboard there they stand up like that that's it uh, nothing there nothing there good well we have a few figures to put in just before I go in with the figures I'm going to put in these lovely masts now that's quite a tall mast and I'm putting these in with burnt sienna um, just to give a bit of warmth to this foreground area really and that goes into that boat do we have one in the background oh that is the one right where's do we have another one perhaps we don't oh probably hmm let's put one in the back here because the back of that boat there we go a little bit just helps to give that sense of a of a yard a boat 
area. That's that. And of course these then are for the boat in the background there. And I'm going to put that in there as well. Because um, it all helps give that effect. Lovely. Um, figures, right. Um, reds, a bit of red. Put a bit of yellow with that. Bit of any yellow do, but I'm using... There we go. I'm using cadmium red with a little bit of yellow in there. And these are for the figures, or some of them. I'm going to put another figure in there. Uh, we're going to have a, a red figure there. Oh, and that one's going to be red too. All right. Then we change. And we then paint a um, blue figure. Cobalt blue. Purely blue, no other colour. Um, that figure, that door is going to be blue. Um, figure next to the red is going to be blue there and we might as well have another blue figure here now that's a bit big for a figure so we're not sure where that will work to be quite honest but I can turn that into a figure I think um, and then we have a slightly different sort of brownie red just to there we are figure there with the pram uh, another figure behind with a small figure um, then we have another small figure there um, I'm going to put another couple of little figures there there we go I think that's probably enough figures really right I tell you what it won't be long before looking at shadows and I think we've pretty much got to that stage anyway now I'm using my old favourite Prussian Blue and Oliza and Crimson and I'm going to paint this shadow in first there just checking to see whether that's what I'm looking for don't worry about covering the windows up they'll gradually come back there we go I think so and then of course that casts a shadow onto the all there right now we've got that couple of figures there that are casting a shadow that's in shadow as well um, right we'll, we'll shadow that off shortly um, so that then casts a shadow across there up to there right here we go under there now this is the bit I love nice deep shadow there Nice deep shadow there. Maybe we're going to have to use a bit stronger paint. So it's a bit darker. That crimson is not quite. Just add a bit more crimson. Ah, there we go. Now, are we going to go too dark? I ask myself because um, quite often I do. Well, I think I do, but that's not always the case um, so I'm told but there you go the inside of the windows there the overhang of that plus down inside the door there that picks up there all this would then cast a shadow you see I suppose if you don't get um, let's add a bit more blue to that if you don't go dark enough then unfortunately um, you don't get the the effect and we've got quite a deep shadow on these down the left hand side of those across the top down the left across the top down the left like that underneath there and to the right sun's coming from the left so it's underneath there and to the right a bit more inside the door there that's good yeah we're beginning to sort of bring this to light now on the area there across the top down the right across the top down the right and of course across the back edge there because you will see shadow on the 
roof so that comes like that tucks back like that that all of a sudden brings that into shadow um, what have we got now right shadow under there which stretches to the end slightly overhang there down the right across the top there and there is a separate pane there I think but anyway that's going in um, across there across there down there and down there maybe I've overdone that but there you go that's it um, cross there and cross there oh, lovely it's really picking up that um, and I'm even going to go one tone darker on that one because I want to focus on this area which um, right now there is a slight overhang of this so what happens is you get a shadow that heads off like that and down across the top and down like that well that's what I'm suggesting would be because it never happened that day which is a bit of a shame but I'm sure that's the way it would be may even just pick up that hmm perhaps we'll leave it at that um, right let's just do the rest of the shadows and then we'll see what we've got right the overhang shadow there another one there down the left of those windows inside that window reveal there and there there and there we'll do the figures in a second oh another window there i think but anyway and that would be in shadow too that also in shadow down the window that is an opening so that stretches to there then we have the shadow there across the top down the left across the top down the left across the top down the left in a couple of places because it's a wide window um yeah it's looking as if it's coming to light all of a sudden and then of course we've got some shadow work from the figures and we have a pram of some sort here buggy we don't call them prams do we these days no and we've got seats there that i'm going to depict in this in this color don't know why but anybody that's been here will know that they are seats figures there a couple of oh, very dark heads those figures yeah well a bit of a dark head on that one as well and this one is going to be quite dark wearing a hat there you go that's why that's big well that's my uh, suggestion anyway suggestion of shadow there a little bit there not too much um, what have we got here can't quite see what's going on ah there's another window there is there another window yes there is a window here somewhere oh well put that in it's good enough right now we're going to go enhance these windows a little and that's the window there underneath there we're going to put shadow on that sec in a second um, across the top there that must connect with that that's right um, now this is another area that's really interesting me because it really is crucial to the whole painting really the lovely shadow from this part of the key wall there that finishes there and then it goes up where the water is but then we then come across like that because that's in shadow now i'll come right the way over those there we go like that over those butts because 
some of those boats will be in shadow. So you're going to have shadow like that and then you're going to have most of that all in shadow but of course not all of it. The shadow probably would run up there like that over that boat across inside that one and then we have shadow on the back edge of that back edge of that inside of that one and down the back where the outboard is um, this would be shadow let's just take that shadow along that's the this would be in shadow just working along really now trying to pick up which which area would actually be in shadow this would be in shadow no it wouldn't oh well there you go so that needs to be lightened up then right so that's the bow of that that's in shadow that's in shadow it's in shadow along there that's where that shadow would be but do you know I'm going to make them both the same would anybody know well they would now have told them yeah that's the problem there we are where else are we shadowing I'm making this up as I go along really because I can't actually see where the shadows are But there are some there and some there but if you notice this is how it, we end up with shapes with by using shadow work we create the shape of the boat and the hull um, oh yeah so that would be inside that's probably shadowed we get away with that I think oh and this is shadowed as well because that's also inside and down the back here oh that would be the bow of that which is in shadow um, then we have the shadow like that from the other one comes along like that but I'm not sure quite how that goes but anyway I think we can get away with that and then if we put one or two little gantries we suggest the back of that boat good there we are all of a sudden these boats come to life and then if you shadow under there like that and then just get a damp finger and just drag it through get a nice feeling of a turn that goes into the water um, just same as here there you go there we go that's in shadow there but the whole complete hull is in shadow at the front but of course it comes into light at the back so we've got a bit of red to go in there we go um, that's it any other shadow oh yes yeah we've got to come round the back there and round the back there mm -hmm. good I think that's suggestive enough it's all coming along nicely I'm just putting some warmer time for these portal areas because that will help there's lots of blues in the foreground which I like because it's obviously um, um, is that the portal there perhaps it isn't no probably not it's a little bit of it you see there um, which I like um, right that finishes there like that uh, yeah because that's the back of that and that's the back of yeah that is that does finish there it's all about working out where where one finishes and the other one starts really see how that's warmed that gantry up I like the idea of that it seems to have worked particularly well well in my eyes but you never know what um right now the last really interesting part um, before we just really freshen it up with some 
uh, finishing touches is the water. Now, here we go again. I'm going in with Windsor Blue, Raw Sienna. Now I'm going in fairly dark because I've got the reflection of the wall. Now the wall is not all that dark, but reflections quite often reflect darker than the, the objects they're reflecting. And that is the reason why I really ought to stop there and just work my way across. Now this has got to be done very, very quickly because I don't want any drying like that. Oh, that tucks under. We'll begin to see where the boats are now um, because the water is being put in darker. So you can see the boats come to life. Right, a bit more water now. I want to keep that damp. There we go. Now this runs up to there and finishes. Try if you can when you paint these sort of things to finish where you get an object in the front because if you don't, it never looks right in my experience but um, there we go right that's nice that's kept that nice and that finishes there so that's not a problem good let's just cut down there just to get a sharp edge there and a couple of little edges there right now we begin to see the window area so we weaken it considerably and we use just a little bit of blue Hang on a minute. Let's just put this in now. There's a weak water effect. Right, that's it. I'll be tidied up shortly. Then, of course, we get into that. We drop in just a little bit of blurred image of the odd window or two here and there. Go. and they quite often stand up like that a um, couple of little windows there um, oh we do have some little shapes there that may suggest windows and while we have this darker color I'm going to sweep that across there just to darken that just a touch more before it dries hopefully I can catch this side well, that's good enough. There we are. See the way I've, I've gone in deeper with that to try and catch a film of light. There we are. Now we go. Now watch the way. Now the way I'm going to depict these boats, right? Um, that's the shadow. Sorry, that's the reflection, right? like that, that is dark, right, and now we've got the bow of the boat, a little bit of movement, that's dark, that's dark, that's light, that's quite dark there, that's going to be darker overall, there we go, that's okay, yeah, now as we come forward, we add a lot deeper colour to that to try and get that feeling of sort of ultimate water effect. Don't ever try and go too light with your walls, particularly when you've got this lovely backdrop above. There we go, like that. So that's the basic wash we'll go in again shortly there we go yeah right now while we have this color you then create a feeling of some ripples within the outer edges because if you haven't got ripples then your water looks a 
particularly um, flat and that is not the case with this that's darker too and that's darker so let's go in really dark now because like all these things if you're not dark enough you don't get the feeling of light and that's the theory behind what I paint as you probably know now and then that goes out like that and that goes up like that and you've got a blurred effect uh, underneath just a little bit of suggestion uh, that is in reflection so that's dark and that's dark there that's also dark underneath there get that in before we forget about that there we are oh and that's dark and also really you won't see the bow of that very well right now put a bit more yellow in there a bit more sienna I'm um, sorry raw sienna not burnt raw a bit more blue to create that water sort of rippling movement I don't want to do too much to this don't want to lose the sense of light but I like the idea of that ripple I don't want too much interest in the foreground now that cabin actually stands up and comes back so that would go like that um, this would have a little bit of rippling to to it and the same here there's a little suggestion underneath there little suggestion there big suggestion there Ooh, of course that area there like that of course that boat is light but it's going to reflect fairly dark then we have the moss that will pick up like that always directly underneath oh and this like these masks got to be really put in dark and there it is and you don't put it in in the brown you put it in in a dark color there we go just to soften that that would also be put in there as a wide wiggly area and there's another one next to it as well look at that take that right out of picture good let's allow that to dry now while that foreground is dry I'm just going to go in with some Indian red and Prussian blue uh, to start with just to try and suggest a little bit more detail within that those windows under there it just brings the um, the picture to life I think um, with some little touches um, there uh, there mm, I think that's that's okay oh there's a little bit of shadow work there and I'm just going to go under the gutters again just to sharpen those up there you go a bit more red in there like a bit of red in these little touches A little bit of writing there, a little bit of that there. Um, that's that figure. That should be red. Hang on a minute. I'll put in that in a bit of red. There's all some little little touches that I don't know. What are they? Who knows? Who really cares? It gives that bit of light same here along that overhang lip there don't just draw a line straight across just suggest with a little bit of there we are see how that all of a sudden sharpens up that edge and I want to show the corner of that by dragging some texture into that area because there is some little dark areas 
within that. It's always a good thing to do, to show um, shadow uh, and light within um, your dark areas. Because it, it justifies the shadow then, which, um, a bit more red now. So I want to justify that shadow and I want to justify the darkness of these once they come into shadow. It's the lower parts of those that are in shadow. Um, right, don't want too much interest here, but along the base there, you probably would get a little bit of something going on and just show the corner of that. There you go, that's pretty much as is. Um, we've not got a lot to do, we've got very little to do in actual fact. Oh, we need to go, I think there's just a rim on that, and just down that back edge like that, back edge like that, don't want too much light down, the, down that left back edge. Right, now that would cast a shadow like that come over that boat with the excitement, which I shouldn't do. Um, you've got a shadow now that runs up there. I forgot about those, but put those in in this dark color. We've got a shadow, oh yeah, down there, like that, to where that chimney sits, like that. But then it lays across there like that, and that one lays across there too. There we are. All of a sudden they come into light, shadow, let's darken that completely apart from the top and left hand side, darken the left hand side there, a little bit of suggestion of a pot, like that. Good. Padstow. Isn't that fantastic? Lovely place. I enjoy looking around Padstow today. I really did um, find it quite um, quite unusual. Not, I've been down this way but never been to Padstow before. But I found that um, it's quite an interesting place to, um, to visit. Um, as some um, as an artist does have its um does have its advantages because you you get captivated by the architecture and everything that's um that's going on there um and that's what drew me to this this area here really this harbour it was really the um, the architecture that um, of these buildings and the reflections of them, which um, really suggested that I paint them. Which um, not always the case when I come to paint, but um, it was today, and that really does um, inspire you to paint you know if you're inspired by subjects then you you tend to get caught up with them and try and capture something that um what have we got here oh we've got a bit of a oh it's got a nice rim around these put that in put that in a little bit of red to go in but not too much um, good, good, good. So we're pretty much there, really. One or two little suggestions of, I don't know what they are, but anyway, they're in. Um, oh, and weaker, very much weaker colour for the back edge of these caps. Will be that sort of shape there like that. There we are just to show those up 
and then finally put in some real warm tones now we've got let's use the Indian the cadmium red for an area along the base of that boat there I always have those sort of lines along the base um, that doesn't have one we don't have that many of them which is a bit of a shame but I'm going to put in a little bit there just to highlight that boat um, must be some red somewhere oh well there you go there's a red line around that one like that that's it that's warmed that up and we're going to give this a red line too don't think it's got one but I think I'm going to put one in because that helps immensely and uh, while we've got this red in let's enhance the back edge don't make them any larger but let's just enhance the back edge of that there we go right now just before we finish we're going to put in some warm tones a bit of red now going in very very weak with a little bit of brown because I want these buildings to have a little bit more warmth to them there we go because I want to show up the sun and of course the windows so consequently if we put a bit of red in there in with as an as an overwash just like that just a tad more in places particularly down that back edge there that's where I want the red just where it hits that 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 next building and that mustn't be just a line we've got to make certain that it extends so that's give that an aged rich aged look and this has got to be the same here we want a bit of more richness to that we're not darkening darkening it as such but um, we're giving it just a little bit more color um, not a lot of color going on but uh, we're getting there um, can't be too much more to do to be fair about it before we take the surround away I'll tell you what we will do though while I have this nice color let's just see if we can pick up a little bit extra color in this wall in places because we want to give that impression of that stone it's a little bit plain don't want to overdo that but can you see the way it gives a suggestion of stonework and it introduces the darker tone the, the that dark tone into the lighter tone because that is the reason why we put that in because we've got that uh, stonework within the wall not too much there but it's run out of picture that's right all about that area that's lovely a bit more now for the lower part where in actual fact it would have a bit of this sort of feeling of darker tone of this this old brown let's add a bit more water to that there we go let's see if we can just check we don't mess this up but no no that's better that's coming along nicely there we are because that is exactly what I could see on the day. They've got to be determined strokes, they can't be tentative because otherwise people just don't believe them. There you are, a little bit of extra there. And that, I think, pretty much does it just one other thing um, nothing to be really too concerned about but 
got a feeling that this these walls need a bit of warmth whoops very very weak warm tone mustn't be light at all and that area there for the roof um, and the side so, now those side walls are probably okay and then we're looking at the bit of this lovely old tree here that we can see some little branches sticking out here and there and then we paint in the shadow side of that because every every uh, everything we've got here is a shadow and that shadow then casts across there that gives it a little bit of interest see the well cast of that shadow across and then it just gradually around the base and that casts across there like that good let's get the surround away and sign it up well there we are that's the basic composition um, one or two little finishing touches but I'm just going to sign it in the paint that I've used and uh, sign up in the bottom right hand corner because that just fits I think where the signature would suit best without taking the eye away from anything I just want to highlight the tops of these roofs again just a little bit and just down there that's better just a little touch under there just down there down that area there there's a bit of shadow under there just a touch um, we're pretty much there I think uh, just that area there there it's almost sh what I'd call sharpening up of edges really that um, it does help just to separate buildings and to create frames edges um, figures so much going on in this building in this painting that um, you know let's just add a bit more shadow to this so it just seems a weak shadow right that's better as you know I'm not into weak shadows rightly or wrongly I just felt that shadow was a little weak so, but on the weak side just a little bit there like that just crosses that and underneath there that's better and of course that then shadowed underneath as well there we go that's far better so there we have it um, Padstow Key as I saw it today in the uh, well it wasn't as sunny as that but at least it's uh, finished anyway brilliant well there it is that's a finished painting I hope you've enjoyed watching that um, it's um, quite a complex little painting um, but it's one I wanted to do uh, when I was here uh, in North Cornwall um, and Padstow particularly appealed to me um, and uh, obviously there will be more to come later on but thank you all very 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 much for watching and uh, hope to see you all again very soon <laughs>